Welcome back to The Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. You know, I try to cover everything I can think of when it comes to the actual joy of vinyl. You know, things like equipment and tips for cleaning records and, you know, just really general discussions about how I obsess over sound and well, the placement of my speakers. Ouch. Well, recently, my son's girlfriend asked me a question about records that I don't think I've covered yet. I might have touched on it in some of the comments, but not in an actual video. You know, she's new to records and has started her own collection. And she wanted to know how it all worked. How does a piece of plastic contain sound? I mean, this piece of plastic doesn't, and unless I you know, click it, but it doesn't contain sound. So how does, how does this? What sort of sorcery is embedded, or what sort of sorcery embeds sound in a plastic waiting to be heard by dragging a diamond-tipped needle through it? How does it achieve a stereo sound? A good many of you watching right now know all of this, but this channel is also for those that are new to the joy of vinyl records. So this one's for you, Hannah, and anyone else who is mystified by the internal magic within vinyl records. I have to admit, I sometimes marvel at how it works myself. I mean, I, I understand the mechanics of it, but the fact that a stylist can unleash the sound of Miles Davis's trumpet or the voice of Brad Delp still amazes me. It's not like Brad's vocal range or Miles's genius is somehow, you know, embedded in the groove. It's really just a piece of plastic with one long groove, just one long wiggly groove that begins its spiral here at the very beginning and ends it in the dead wax or right before the dead wax. And how long is this groove? Well, it depends on the length of the music, of course, but on average, it's about 1,500 feet or 460 meters long. That's almost as long as five football fields, American football fields. Crazy, right? So when I say groove, that's really all it is. I've covered how vinyl records are made and how the groove is cut in other videos. So just know that the groove is cut into the vinyl to represent the music. It does this by carving a V-shaped groove with a mastering lathe at 45 degree angles. And you know, to keep it simple, the left channel information is on one side of the groove and on the right channel or the right channel is on the other side of the groove. It's not one straight groove. It's a series of wiggles with peaks and valleys. And those serve as a physical representation of the music. Now, if it were just a straight line, well, it would sound like this. Fortunately, some brilliant minds realized that to turn that hiss into sound, or sound that's a bit more pleasing to the ear, you needed to add some wiggles to it. So when you pull a stylus through it, it moves quickly back and forth and, and up and down, turning this into this. I'd really love to have played something a bit cooler, but you know, copyright. So think of it like a dance where the groove has two dancers, one representing the left channel and the other dancer representing the right channel of the stereo sound. The left dancer moves in one direction, say north and south, and the right dancer moves in a maybe a perpendicular direction east and west. Now this dance is super intricate because both dancers are moving simultaneously in the same groove. The needle or the stylus of the record player is like an interpreter who watches these two dancers. As the record spins, the needle follows the groove's wiggles, and when the groove wiggles one way, the needle picks up the moves of the left channel dancer. When it wiggles the other way, it picks up the right channel. This is how the needle can tell which sounds are meant for the left speaker and which are meant for the right speaker. The depth of the wiggle as well in the groove determines how loud that sound is. So if our imaginary dancers are doing a big dramatic move that translates to a louder sound in your speakers. A smaller, more subtle move will mean a quieter sound. Now check this out.
As the record spins and the stylus follows the groove, it picks up these different movements, which are then translated into electrical impulses by the magnets and the coils that are inside your cartridge. And these are sent back through the wires, sent back through the tone arm, and it's amplified, or that electrical signal is amplified by your phono preamp and the amplifier. And then it's sent to the respective left and right speakers. So yeah, it is kind of like magic. And I'd really love to play ELO's Strange Magic right now, but uh, copyright. I need a huge budget. That would be cool, right? Man, I could do all kinds of things with a big budget and not, not have to care about you know, licensing and stuff. But anyway, speaking of budget, in 2024, you know, budget permitting, I want to jump into the wonderful world of moving coil cartridges. So I'm looking for recommendations. If you have any, drop them in the comments or email me at this address, this email address right here. You can also get in touch with me at joyavinyl.com. Some of you have already voiced your recommendations after watching my review of the Ortofon LVB250 stylus. So thank you for those recommendations because I've added them to the list that I'm compiling. And as always, thank you for watching. And until next time, please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.